Certainly curious, but Jam, I think time for the talk is over. It is time for action of our first Rising Star Odyssey. And do you know what? You talk about seven games potentially being on the docket. I would like to be greedy. Can we change it to best in line? Because this will be fabulous. That blast from a past season one. Uh, RLCS, or even as it was previously, the Rocket League Central tournaments as well. And look at that, that's man himself, Oli, mostly doing aerial dribble in his own half, uh, but still looking fabulous doing so. He's always has been a threat in the air. And right now it is a G1 setting it up in front of the opposition's net, quickly moving to the other side. Karga stopped by Oli yet again. That man seems to be everywhere right now. Certainly, decent few opening paces so far here in Joa. I somewhat suspected the physical game. I didn't expect it to be this quick, and that's a lovely pass and layoff. <laughs> Great save by you the former Liquid Man. You can see his speed just jumping, leaping into that top left corner, and he absolutely had to. The shot was deadly, and it's only his quick reflexes that stop G1 from scoring. First, Dorito will receive something from... Oh no, too much praise on speed. Oli combined with his team, and I'm pretty sure there has been at least some sort of attack from Dorito, or at the very least threat from Dorito, that really brings it on through one. Disgust it with you, John. You can't preach speed enough. How dare you suggest a thing like that? <laughs> oh yes, well, I just did, Danny. Sorry, but I just did. Yeah, physical play, which so far we've probably only seen one demo, but I do not think that this number is gonna be final. Expect explosion, expect bombs, expect even just a threat of physicality in front of the net for us. Trying to beat everybody, there's just too many of everybody for him to beat. Fabulous passing play, I guess all those statements of him and gone by. Well, let that physicality still be around here in speed. You just see him dancing and darting around here, not necessarily right through here. And do you know what? Moving across here, there was a bit of a conversation on goals being scored. There might be a certain match that might be a little bit higher than this one, but we want it close. We want it the competition. And there's a chance knocking. Oh, how about this? Not just knocking, just blowing the bloody doors off. Perez in the air, collecting a beautiful setup from speed. And you could see the whole of the G1 is grounded, rushing back. No chance whatsoever for them to uh, stop this beautiful redirect slash counterattack that the Fufax Dao has started from their own side. Certainly so. 1-1. One, one. Fabulous already. This series here. Ollie there, we have talked about him being moved into the line and Kaka, one touch here, a fabulous save, and it just gets tipped aside here, so a counter could be breathing. How about this one, Kaka, well, with just a little bit of flair on his flicks, bumps here and there, Kaka tries to remove some of the players of G1 on the flank, ball is going to return all the way to the blue side of the field, that was a lovely little pinch, just as long as they have control and speed manages to redirect it even further. Dorito is going to be playing a wall and speed. Managed to work it past the player so hard for the defensive but a player to uh, really figure out how like really, for the defensive player to put it past the defense in that situation. But they are working wonderfully. And look at that. Karka doing everything himself. I think next immediately going to be threatening speed as a third player. Just absolutely brilliant positioning. G1 cannot get out of their own half. This car up into the wall here in Dorito. Certain round here. Defensive. Panic stations here in speed. Oh, he took his time. Move it to the side here. Could have been a slippery slope for a 2 1 <laughs> scoreline. Rough, rough. Dorito will collect the ball. And actually, he's going to be finding himself at a man advantage as well. Speed has been removed. That's already a third demo by G1. But that, those demos have not necessarily given them an opportunity to score a goal. They're there. Backs up, have to think about them, and every single time there's somebody uh, out of G1 against them, it's always going to be at the back of their minds. <sighs> Missed ball, nobody really gets the possession. Not yet, a speed just looking patiently. So look at that man with experience, just tipping it so low, so the boost consumption won't be necessary. A worrying some factors so far, and that's just been launched downfield here. You can just sense that maybe this team hasn't quite jailed on the chemistry side of the pitch so far. But they're holding on well. Oh, yes. Well, I'm pretty sure there has been a lot behind the scenes. But then again, even some of the teams that we know the changes were happening a long time ago. You are kidding me that angle, Danny. 
Oh, that was foul. This one, I could get even a little bit more painful. You, you said it yourself, Daddy. That was pain. Beautiful redirect back. There's an attempt of a clear by speed, but was he blocked by the opposition? Somewhere did not allow him to get a perfect touch, and rotation was still lagging behind from Fufax dub. That's where G1 strikes. That's time. Is not a friend for Fufax dub anymore. They need to commit everything, and they keep on losing the players on the field. You're losing on the goal count, you're losing players here. The only thing they've got left is time, and they're running short of a jump. Oh, this can be a cruel game sometimes. <laughs> Perez is going to be stopping him and bumped immediately out of the way by Dorito. So yet another counter-attacking opportunity just breaks down for Atomic and the rest of G1. They just need to keep the ball in. And you can see, touched by Perez, just a touch, not a clear, not moving forward. Karka has to go absolutely all out. But Oli, already on the other side of the field, keeps the ball out of the reach of Fufax Duff and this touch. I think this spells the end of the game number one. Fres would like to pass it to his teammate. He... This could have gone some other way, but it's incredibly hard to do a full court carry. And G1, with 45 seconds to spare, scold, score the go-ahead goal and get themselves the first win of the day. First win of the tournament, at least on this broadcast. But this hasn't been all daisies and all smiles, was it, Danny? No, certainly not here in Champ. Do you know what? We expected G1 to come out strong. We expected them to, you know what, show and flex a bit of muscle here. The questions was, of course, going to be how well does Ollie fit into the lineup here? I don't think there's any doubt here, surely, on anybody <laughs> after that second goal. Yeah, clearly top top score i uh he is he is absolutely on point and done ap done everything uh i do believe a couple of the demos were his as well so he is uh he is playing his game the team is allowing him to play his game and it seems like there's already enough chemistry for them to work well also would love to point out speed has been on the top for his team four saves again he was the architect for that top left corner just reaching out moment and i wouldn't be surprised if he still has a couple of these highlight moments in his back pocket as well yeah if speed has got top of the score or there is something wrong that man is has the star part there might be a few disagrees with him. You're more than welcome. Get down into the comments below. And there he is, a slow and gentle here. And do you know what? We might be talking about his goal school ability. It seems his decision making at times has kept this one very close here. And there's the man of the R pushing down failed. I would say speed, as well as many other veteran players, as a dangerous moment happens in front of G1's net. I think that's the attack going to be over. That's what speed that other veteran players have that really separates them from the rest, and that is just loads and loads of experience, thousands of hours, and the decision making to go along with it. They know they might not be perhaps as fast, they might be not as flashy, but they are smarter, wiser, perhaps than some of their opponents, and that's how they get the work done. Speed needs to be very careful. Right now, just trying to make himself big in front of the net as shots are being put towards the net. Pick a moment there. Experience or not there. Nearly unsavable here, and that's a poor touch by Speed. Redirecting it back downfield, upfield, mind you. And they're getting closer here. That should have been a more of a delicate pass to give at least an option on top. The side of Fufax up is starting to look for their own demo. This ball dangerously goes towards Dorito, but as he was not expecting it. He only can put it skywards, and again, there's a lot of these really high spikes that both of the teams are maybe not favoring, no, but also not helping. Oli gets a skipper off the ground, and speed on this occasion is beat. Did it have to be speed? He seems to be playing defensively, Danny. That's what, why he's constantly there. By no means, that's him to blame. But he is playing quite a defensive role. Four saves in the previous match. That's how he got the top scoring accolade for game number one. And again, his saves are crucial. But one goalie cannot save absolutely everything. And that's case in point. Ooh, look at Oli. Look at Karka. That was a nice little sequence that the Fufax Dop roster has created. Trying to 
agree with you. One keeper is certainly not enough. Not against G1. Not in a mood like that, and unfortunately. Ollie not getting the ideal pass here, and just this connection here on the opposition counterparts. Um, they're not fending each other, it's just not quite reaching the other team yet. If they get that sorted out here, we could be seeing a little bit more of a momentum shift. Right now, more and more uh, play in front of the Fivax.net. This is just going to be killed pretty much dead with Atomic gathering it all on the back. And right now, rotations on the ground as well. You can see G1 Sharks in the water just circling around, picking up straight possession. Holy individual attempt. Dorito both has to backflip because he's not in good position. Ed gets bumped out of the way, but this is a perfect setup to Oli from a top. Fabulous bump. They at least have the idea to get the ball safe. Fortunately not. In the grand scheme of things, it just allows this one to move across. It requires one to be sent. And 2 0 up here, Jam. Job's getting a little bit more difficult here. And with no real output on the other side of the net here, G1 might be starting to run away with it here. It is looking very likely on the line and in. This, this we should have been a goal immediately, pretty much immediately passing place came for G1. <laughs> Double player safe needed. Oli almost finishes that himself. Actually, I'm surprised about the speed. Actually, I shouldn't be surprised about the speed. It was just straight out to drive at the ball, hit it into the net. The three goal deficit could be quite a big problem for Ress. Not his game this time. He is still looking for touches, for passes, for anything that he can contribute for the team. He has been working on the demo account. He seems to be foregoing the playing the ball and he's play, trying to play the opposition. And when I say play, I do mean remove them from the field. Well, sometimes you might have that option of removing somebody field. Playing the ball is your ideal method, of course, here, but. Sometimes it's a seizure to remove it, give yourself more time, more space, and options to work off here. And kind of nice little touch up feel. But you watch here, I think G1 just content the plus pass this ball around and. Yum! Danny! <laughs> what this about should it? happen. I think this, this should absolutely happen. Dorito did his best, did his absolute best. I think everybody's gonna laugh about it. Fovac Jobs still know that they cannot stop. This was a fluke. Uh, G1 know that they have not been beaten. Look at that Parker. Not a 50 that he was wanting. And this actually can be going the other way around. Speed has to reach. Dorito is going to be on the ground. Stop with speed again. Two touches, one after the other. Incredibly crucial. Uh, but this, that one goal could have been immediately been just nullified. Unfortunately, straight off the kickoff, felt like advantage Fufax that, but they couldn't utilize it immediately. Right now, yet another touch just goes to nowhere. I wish to see a little bit more passes from Fufax Dab in the same vein that G1 are showing in the final third of their opposition. I certainly hope so, but is that one goal might be relieved. Oh, how about? No, certainly not. We've, we've seen one flute goal jam. Second is asking too much. Unfortunately for everybody, Turbo has sadly retired here. We won't see any more of the certain specialties, but you know what? If you had his career, you wouldn't mind an old one or two. <laughs> He's the four-time world champion. And right now, it is only two games ahead, but this is the point where Fufax Dop would have taken that tactical timeout. And Danny, can we just please talk about Oli again? Two goals, one assist. He is absolutely everywhere for this team. And from match to match, he seems to be only improving. For us, thankfully, breaking that 100-point mark, otherwise anything below a triple-digit score means that the player was cut down out of the play, not really present. Again, we mentioned that Forrest has been going for bumps, but even then, his contribution needed to be perhaps more seen. While on the other hand, on the other side, on the side of G1, there's no question who has been putting in the work. Yes, and Jama, it's one of those situations here where you look at and you sort of go, right, Obviously, if this is where we see this future G1 side with Ollie, it's Valbus. You couldn't fault it. What they're doing is great. And it's what you'd be looking for in terms of signs here. The opposition sort of counterpoint is this is a bubble side. This is a side that's coming through the ranks. We should be seeing a few potential issues. The problem is how do you adjust? How well can you somewhat adapt through it? And do you know what's here? 
think G1 might have that strength. It might be a little bit too overpowering, but will that adaptation come through? That's what we'll be hoping to see in this game three. All right, speed and Karka. Karka going for a demo. Lovely bit of play for us now on the back, and that's a two-player commit previously from Food Fight Stop. Needed, because that's created a chance, and it also puts himself in danger the moment a counter starts from the G1 side. Only, you, this 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 is true now. This was true a year ago when he was still doing these aerial dribbles. You give the ball to Oli, he, he gets the space. You are trembling in your boots because he can do wonders with that dribble. I think if you even look at some of the oppositions in the grand scheme of things of one player we talked about, Jack Gieras, Isco as well from uh, Quadrat, presuming what we expect might be coming. They are all fabulous players on to, but Oli, always a treat. But how about this one, Jam? Harbert Bowden to speed. That's a one, two, three, wasn't it? Well, at the least for us and Skarka have combined for a little pass. A demo as well. Hello, demo on the third defender. That's Oli out, goal in, and phew, the placement for speed, sublime. Beats Ooh, and then straight off the kickoff, all of that could have been thrown out of the window. Let it be thrown out of the window, but it's been one of those sort of topsy-turvy type game Valdez here. And you've been talking about certain players' contributions. One save there, and Ollie having a go! It is out of the window, Jam. Do you have anything else? <laughs> I don't even know what to put to it. Goodness gracious, that man has absolutely everything, and yet another goal. He's currently averaging two goals per game, Ollie. Up, leave some for the other teams, the other players, at least somebody. If you wanted to make a first impression, if, if, if you if you are meeting your partner's parents for the first time, you want to be at your absolute best behavior, you want to impress them. This is what Oli is currently doing. He is impressing every single player and every single player on the field, every single viewer, a fan, both of G1 and any other team. This this transfer, if and when it happens, seems already to be paying dividends. Oh, I like the CFG when the socials are working active today. There's for Ollie and a tux there, maybe a rose to sweep people off their feet. And Joe you know Watt, they're sweeping everybody off the feet. The series might end up that way too, Jam. And Joe you know Watt, they don't deserve to be swept, but that's the direction we're heading into in Karen Speed. That's the first time they've been upfield in a very long time. And yet it stops and only, oh, this precision on this time not working out. But the, the point is, it's not about precision. It's about the fact that he keeps on getting these chances. And this one doesn't go in. The next four might, if or uh, if Fubak stops, still continue giving them the opportunities. And the problem is, Fubak stop can squeeze out one goal. So far, every single series, uh, every single game rider, they have been managing to squeeze one goal, but it's not enough. You could see on the ground, Oli, Dorito, and a pass. Most importantly, I think this is the it, the absolute it for the side of G1. It's how they move the ball in front of the net and how there's always somebody waiting for a pass and somebody ready to get it. Just sit there and smile, Jam. Ollie's just done his job. The rest of the team are doing theirs. And do you know what? There was discussion, rightly so. Is this sort of the X factor that G1's looking for? Is this the player that you want to see? Well, he's been scoring, Car -car. he's been shooting, and that's just a tad unfortunate. <laughs> Garka falls on the ball, stops from the score being even more drastic. With that last one, oh, hold your horses, Oli shooting on target. He always going to be the player collecting the ball as well on the rotation back. He's doing absolutely everything Atomic, not in time. But with that last goal by Atomic, now everybody on the side of G1 has scored at least once in the series. Fores and Karka on the side of Fufak Stop are still waiting for their opener. And... Yep, they can still set up speed, but I would love to see everybody in action. Top left corner, he won our stop yet again. I think that was half players, half woodwork this time. You need every bit of assistance you can, jump. Spicy when you're feeling under this amount of pressure. Boost been taken, balls being moved that's across left right. Oh, that's fabulous, and what a save by speed. The Fubak Stop are just swatting the ball away out of their last strength. And the problem is G1 is all around them, ready to receive the ball. Atomic doing a little bit of a breakdance right on the ground. Oh, 
feels feels too much air roll and too many backflips, man. It is it is almost impossible right now for Fufax Dub to create anything. And again, I would love to see more of what G1 is showing us passing plays, but has been feeling like it has been plaguing Fufax Dub, besides the fact that they're just stuck in their net, is when they go into the offense, it's one touch with nobody at the end of said touch. They are seemingly not necessarily looking for each other that often. Speed has scored off a passing play, but those passing plays are few and far between. Be able to generate something, and just when you might just feel deep down in the pits of your stomach, you might have one, two chances to get yourself back into it. That might have been that opportunity there. Speed up will chuck this away, and that's a decent CM credit to it. But sadly, Jam, the clock is ticking down, and do you know what? Maybe the time. For G1 to move on. 3 0 is the series scoreline so far. That's a match point, Danny. G1 one step away from getting themselves into the quarterfinals. Their opposition is still going to be decided in the opposite match between Sa and Celestials. Just to quickly give you a reminder Sa, though Magbo and Hips, while Celestials are Heck, HB, and Carrion. Carrion Yoni. Uh, yet another flinch player, another name blast from the past, and somebody who I, along many other players in this tournament, I'm happy to see still around, still performing on the highest of levels. It's it's always nice to see some of those older players as well as the new talent go through because it's a shame to see the older talent move on. There's such a it's almost like a vat worth of knowledge information of the game itself that could be lost. And some of those newer players could tap into it and learn from it and develop. And do you know what? When they combined as a team, it's great. But Jam, it's a match point in the round of 16. A former major champion could be knocked out already. Well, 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 and then well some more. It's the tough situation right here for S, trying to immediately open up a scoring for Fufax Duff. And there is these moments, honestly, when it's the most neutral off the kickoff. That Fufax Dab perhaps have been looking the most dangerous when everything's equal, when they do have some sort of almost like a setup play. And that could have been dangerous as well. Oli is no stranger to redirecting the ball in the best of ways. Not gonna be going for bumps. Speed, honestly, she like flipped himself around that has been bumped. Nothing happening in front of the net and a long clear, not gonna be finding anybody on the other side of the field. Here's Oli. He wanted to talk about his abilities of redirecting the air dribbles. <laughs> Was Oli flicked? Or did he get the power himself? Please give us yet another angle for this because he was followed by one of the players. Is that right? Oh, oh still cannot. Bumped. It was bumped by Forza. That's how you get the power and generate it onto it. It's technically an own goal. And just to annoy a good friend of mine, Sam, where's that cue ball going in the cries of John Virgo? <laughs> Well, that was that was a oh the pass I suppose since Doritos is, is uh, cleaning up in the end. But G1, once again, with the goal advantage, starting the game number four, which could be potentially the last game of the series. Strong for Fufax Dop. Oh man, oh man, this is a tough road. And still, I do not believe that there was much that they've shown us. Individual uh, quality of speed, yes. Karkan for us, as the two players have been playing the longest on this roster. Okay, they also have the understanding. They're not falling over each other. We're not seeing a un, uh, um, unpredict uh, not unpredictability, but hold on a second. We're not just seeing uh, just unfamiliarity with one another. But still, one, some crucial uh, moment is lacking, and in fact, the off just don't have the chances, don't have the opportunities, and so far have not had a chance for more than goal in, one goal in the game. All the while, G1 always did that, and then outdone themselves on top. Continue with your point a bit further. Forza and of course Car has played for a decent length of time. The way they're playing, you can tell that they're just comfortable around each other. It's not like they have an issue with playing with speed. The problem is they cannot find each other just to break through so easily, so clean here. But when G1 is arguably speaking just outpacing them, it makes life a bit more difficult. And there is goal number two, and it might be the conclusion. Look who's on the board. Wow, it's that man. Only again, you could see G1 running circles around Fufax. It is troublesome. For Fufax, maybe the problem is that they're, it's, it's not that they're playing 
have playing badly amongst each other, it's that they're forced to play versus G1. Lovely flick by Atomic. We're finally seeing the kickoff goal. Unfortunately, it's not for Fufax Dop, who had the best chance so far. It's just a classic Atomic getting everything the flick at the end. Textbook. Textbook kickoff goal. Okay, so it'll be interesting to see when all the round one and round 16 gets completed, Jam, to see how has those qualifying teams have done, especially against those invitational spots here, because of my looking briefly on Rocket Baguette, it might be Darsum, but there is chance, there is hope, there is one Forza. The one small chance. A little bit of patience, love to see that, then of course taking it to the sky, Best everybody on G1. Perez is on the board for the first time in the series. Two goal difference still needs to be challenged. Have a look at that. Another demo. Oli's in the air. Perez trying to go low, but Oli just seems to be everywhere. You try to trick him out. He's not stopping. They really need somebody in front of the net. Fufax stop. And they might still find somebody. Karka. It's quite high, but on the crossbar. Hanging on is Dorit. Downfield though, and that's just a strange it's a problem. Cotton. It is a problem. Giving the ball to your opposition, jam. That's brave. Oh, speed! A speed should be the player who is, would be challenging that ball. But as far as it was going back, oh, more bumps now. Speed just gets in the way of the opposition. Got a shot away. They cannot put it on target. Fufax up are finally getting the chances. But right now, when their series, nay, tournament life is on the stake, it's where they need to pull out that hundred percent conversion rate. And they are not, and chances are not going to come as easily. A decent save demo as well. Want conversions, unfortunately, G1 looking the more likely, the more promising. And when you have Ollie passing like that, that's just toying with your food right now. <laughs> uh, still, I know that G1, they cannot celebrate early. They know it, we know it. Everybody knows you need to be serious. Straight on target with Atomic, and then somebody in the back from G1 as well. That was Dorito. Atomic now with the ball himself. Speed patiently waiting. But it's well, the positioning is there. Fufax Dop receiving the ball. You see that the player's on the right positions. Uh, but they cannot challenge. Those 50 50s are not necessarily going in their favor. And right there, you could see a moment where Fufax Dop were nowhere near the ball, not ready to immediately pounce on him. All the while, to me, it seemed that G1 is always in the right spot. A couple of bumps. This could be on target. This needed to be more powerful then. Should have been, should have been placed, even with accuracy too here. You could just sense that a desperation to talk about the tournament life. It could be knocking gone here, but mind you, everybody has left that ball to its own devices here. One last roll of the dice, surely from here. Mm. This is it's really everybody on the Fufax stop, their fans. <gasps> we are crossing our fingers. This could have been it, but the goal is too small. Oh, certainly, but when you have defenders like that, it makes life certainly difficult on both ends. So for them, force it one per touch. And Joe, you know what? When you have G1, when you have all it, was it the right decision to pick up? I think the gameplay spoke for itself. <laughs> and we saw it, and not this time, but throughout the series, I think the. Undisputed MVP has been Oli. The new acquisition for G1 in place of Mark by 8 has channeled the best Mark by 8 gameplay courtesy of Season X, where BDS were king, where BDS were looking like just there's not going to be anybody but BDS and Mark by 8. I feel like that's what Oli has showcased us today in his new G1 colors. Oh. Comparing to a world champion, is that a bit early, Jam? We'll see. We'll see on that one there, but it's certainly a performance we're shouting from the rooftops here. But Jam, it's sad to see a team go, but thankfully it's not over for G1 and the rest of the seven teams pushing through to the quarterfinal. What a setup do we have here? We're having something something tremendous. I'm currently looking at the scores. Uh, the other match uh, that has been being broadcast on the side of Rocket Baguette in French. Again, if you'd like to check that out, slash at which slash.tv slash Rocket Baguette. Vitality have swept their opposition in good day. That's Metzenaris, Fike Salen, and Simus. 
shout out to the Lithuanian player, uh, are going to be out. And that was a closer series, uh, but honestly mirroring some of the what we've seen between G1 and Fufax Dap. 4-1-3-0-2-1-2-0. So scorelines have been shrinking down. And unlike Fufax Dap, uh, Good Day were not able to score in every single match. So Fufax, at the very least, can take something back home. Unfortunately, only that is that and the experience is what they're going to be home with as they are out of the tournament for this time. I still have four more to look forward to. Certainly so, but yeah, with that natural conclusion to the round of 16 at least from the Rocket, of course, we have to give our shout out as well to Ali, who are wonderful sponsors for this tournament as well, and Sanex for trusting us to have this event here for everybody to continue watching. But, yeah, there is a quarterfinal. I don't think we should delay any more, shall we? No, absolutely not. Ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, Rising Stars Odyssey is going to be on your screens with yet another match. Best of a Rocket League right here on the Rocket RB.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Rocket RB and day uh, number two of the Rising Stars Odyssey League presented by Ali here on the Rocket RB. My name's Craftman, joined alongside by Psycho this time around, and we are getting ready for our first quarterfinal game here on the English stream. If you do want to go see one of the other quarterfinals uh, being streamed over in French, you can go over to the twitch.tv forward slash rocket baguette. But stay right here. If you want to see Moist taking on, uh, to be confirmed, we're still waiting on the result coming through of uh, Williams Resolve versus Well. But we'll get that to you uh, in just a sec or when, when that information does come through. Uh, but Cycle, let's uh, have a little chat about the series that we just saw on this stream right here. Uh, G1 versus FUFA. Mm -hmm. We we thought it was, we, we were talking about this uh, off stream. We were thinking it was, looked very, very scrappy from both teams uh, at the start of the series, but G1 found the rhythm and got the win eventually. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's fair to say that that first series we had on stream uh, between Gamers First and Fufax Stop, there was a heavy sort of favourite in that matchup, and I do believe that was resting in the hands of Gamers First. Of course, a uh, roster which has came about in recent times to really be a force to be reckoned with in the European space, and of, of course being one of our invited uh, teams as well. But Fufax Stop, it just seemed as if they couldn't find that important rhythm early on, and especially that consistency, especially uh, with the likes of those defensive mishaps we were seeing early on. It really did sort of plague that roster early on in the series. But we did see them launch somewhat of a comeback towards those latter periods in the series it could have been a closer one maybe if they got to speed that little bit quicker but that's the way this game goes sometimes Grafman. Uh, it is the way the cookie does crumble every now and again um and we've had actually a lot of sweeps happen in the first round of today's rising star odyssey uh off stream we had carmine Cart sweeping out chickens uh over on the french stream we had vitality sweeping out good day um so get so get a lot of round one sweeps uh, but I imagine a lot of these results are going to get closer. By the way, we just had the result come through. Uh, I'm not seeing what the score is, but we've been told it is going to be Moist taking on Williams Resolve, which I think is what I, th I think we... 4-1, uh, you said, was it? That's, yeah, that's, that's interesting. I, I, would have, I would have thought I'd been relatively comfortable for, for, for Williams Resolve. I think everyone was kind of expecting that it was going to be Moist versus Resolve uh, coming through. But Wilds are... Uh, 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 plucky young upstart team uh, and i suppose that's what these tournaments are all about giving young teams mm -hmm. and uh, bubble teams the chance to play against all these rlcs teams yeah exactly and especially on the side of wild there was one player which really did put a smile on my face that being billy uh, who sort of transferred third over to more of a coaching role in recent times and he didn't really get to show the european space i don't think his full potential as a player and yet he did manage uh, to push as far as he did today albeit losing uh, to williams resolve as that result has just come through but I think it does provide an incredible opportunity for players who are interested in whether it's re-entering the competitive space or getting involved um, thoroughly for the first time. This is a fantastic platform to do so. It certainly is, and uh, especially for Williams Resolve as well. Now, there's been a lot of talk about roster swaps and roster changes and people going this way, that way. It's it's classic EU off-season RLCS. Um, but uh, but one team who has kept their roster the same is Williams Resolve. They made a big point about it. I was following their, uh, uh, the, the head of esports at Williams Resolve, uh, Jeff, on Twitter. He was like, I can categorically say we are not making a roster yeah. change, and they have not done so. Meanwhile... Uh, I mean, Moist, Moist making a roster change is the meme right now. Is Moist keep one roster together uh, challenge brackets impossible? Um, talk, talk about Moist. Obviously, this roster change isn't official yet, 
there's a lot of reports and r- rumors that this is the direction they want to go and now ha- bringing cash in uh for the re- uh uh, t- taking out rise from that equation, or excuse me, taking out uh, Ashlow, I should say, uh, out of the uh, out, out of the moist fold. Now bringing in quadrants cash. What do you make of this and the the position that moist always seem to find them in, and making a roster change every moment they can? I think it's a difficult position to be with if you're a moist fan and if you're on the moist roster itself as well, because they're trying to reclaim some of that former glory, which they showed us back in, for example, the spring split in London, where they made that magical run. They made so many fans uh, themselves on the day, and you can just see the passion that was in the players on that day. And over time, that has almost sort of faded as the results have become few and far between in terms of uh, positive news for them. So looking back uh, to the winter split, for example, ninth to 12th, 5th to 8th and 5th to 8th across the Cup, the Open and the Invitational, wasn't particularly strong for them. And this sort of player roster swap that they've made, introducing cash is, of course, replacing a player in Rise, who I thought at least had a very different play style, a very polarising uh, way of taking to the turf. So it's a different uh, it's a different situation for them and a very difficult one to call. So this is the first time we'll, we'll be able to see what that looks like. Yeah, so so you, you I was correct the first time it was it was Rise uh, getting replaced. Uh, no, 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 it was Astro. It is Astro getting replaced Astro. Uh, uh, as as of uh, as of right now. But uh, uh, but yeah, I, I think some some like you said the the thing that Moist fans want to see, I think right now is probably consistency. And yeah. I imagine the players on the roster want consistency as well because chopping and changing who you're playing with, um, ev- pretty much every three or four months does doesn't let you create that full team chemistry i mean we see rosters stick together for years and years and years and they can have a lot of success but if you're cha- if you're changing uh just based on oh we had like one bad split or a couple of bad tournaments and you say all right we want to get this guy off and get this guy in yes it might work for a little bit but the honeymoon period only uh mm-hmm. only lasts so long so we're, we're just gonna have to see if this does work for moist in the end Yeah, we will have to. And I think ever since they did lose Vatira, maybe that spark that was once lit and fully ignited has sort of dissipated. Of course, one of the greatest players in recent times that have has, has entered European competition, of course, a name that everyone's going to recognise as, as as being one of the top dogs at the moment. That has been something which has maybe been lost uh, for Moist. But looking over to the side of their competition as well, it's 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 difficult. It's difficult to know how Williams Resolve are going to take to this situation here in front of us, Craftman. But I'm thinking uh, with their combined experience on that roster, especially, it could be a closer one than we expect. Yeah, I think I think this is going to come right down to the wire. Let me have a look at uh, Moist uh, versus uh, uh, Williams Resolve head to head because Williams Resolve are not uh, uh, an a- absolutely, you know, they're, they're, they're a very solid team in, uh, in what they can do. Williams... Result. I'm trying to type and talk at the same time here. It's ne- never a good idea, folks. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Williams Resolve has, has actually had the better of this uh, of this matchup, um, just based on their Wikipedia matches. So back in the Fall Invitational uh, in uh, in this season uh, of RLCS, that was the last time that uh, Williams Resolve beat them three uh, two. Moist swept them the last time they met in the Winter Open, uh, but in all three meetings, uh, over all three meetings, Roman Resolve is winning this uh, this battle th- uh, two series to one. So Moister, you could maybe call this a bit of a bogey team for for Moist, but of course, you know, with the like we said, the amount that Moist changes roster, you can't really take anything from past results in that case. Yeah, it's it's just all of these dynamics are going to shape a series, which is just almost impossible for co- uh, to call. I think. Almost every analyst, every coach figure behind the scenes is going to be looking at this and not knowing how it's going to shape up. And I think that's what's going to make it so interesting. And of course, with best of seven being the series length as well, it gives plenty of time for each of the two rosters to acclimatize to each other, to familiarize themselves with a new team potentially that they might not have even scrimmed before, not get involved with fully craftsmen. But I'm very excited uh, to see how it goes. Well, let's get them familiar with all of you guys on stream as well. As we get this one underway, it is Williams Resolve and Moist taking on each other. A best of seven winner goes on to our semi-finals here in the Rising Stars Odyssey. We're very glad you're joining us here on what is 
Uh, a great day for us all here at the Rocket and Rocket to get. Uh, as Breezy looks to have the first shot for Williams Resolve. Just a little bit wide, but the early pressure from Resolve is going to put Moist in a bit of a dicey situation. Breezy off the backboard and nothing doing quite yet as Juicy plays it right back into the middle and no one to go for a goal once more will be denied. We denied that time, but it's nice to see a bit of forward thinking already from Williams Resolve as they push forward in unison here. Breezy and Noasaki both just sort of lurking around that aggressive third as Juicy gets this one off to the side. Flame up quick for this and nice clearance away from Cash just to open up a bit of space for the first time for Moist. Yeah, and that's what Moist really needed is a little bit of space to work with. Resolve have done a decent job in the opening stages at closing down these angles and a few shots so far. Two shots from Breezy is the only ones on the board for either team. It does feel like Williams Resolve have the better of Moist right now. We've not seen Moist in an advantageous position as of yet. Try and get themselves that space. Still nothing yet. A nice pick away there by Cash. We'll try to see what dynamic that Cash is going to be bringing to this Moist roster coming over from Quadrant on loan for this tournament. What do you reckon that there's the one thing that Cash is done in his past and done on Quadrant that you think could benefit Moist? I have to say it's definitely just volatility if you've been following this player at all in his past. He's such a mechanically gifted player, so full of pace and just disruptive to any team he comes up against. Always really just hounding on in those offensive zones and it's something that we're going to have to pay attention to pretty closely in this match is he's going to be one of those players getting involved in the challenge game more so than maybe anyone else but that's a nice drop down from Noah Ju Juicy to see this ball clear maybe a little bit of space once again for Moist but Williams doing a good job here they're doing a very very good job rotations very clean right now I suppose that's what we're talking about with team chemistry these guys have played all season with each other and Moist only picking up Juicy during the season and possibly now, well, now playing the cash just for this tournament, possibly in the future as well. It does take time to get used to playing with each other and Williams Resolve, uh, Resolve definitely have that advantage behind them. Still no goals on the board and that's the one main thing we're looking for here, Psycho, is Joyo once again. And lovely save from him. Juicy's, uh, or I should say that's Joyo's first save. Juicy's the one with four saves so far, keeping Moist on a clean sheet. Oh, and this might be a little disastrous oh, somehow. <laughs> oh. Somehow it's ricocheted against the post. I thought you just made the greatest jinx of all time, Craftman, but it was not meant to be as in this aggressive third once again is Williams. They've had so much possession inside the half of Moist, but still this ball is not just going to break through that easily as Cash in unison with his teammates just about sees that one away. Ah, uh, Psycho, I've, I've jinxed uh, goals and not goals many, many times over. I think my uh, my jinxing powers have run out, so uh, if I say something, it does end up being true. Oh. That's my that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> as, no, as Moist now try to find a little semblance of offense again. To only two shots for Juicy, Breezy on six alone, eight total for Rome's resolve. They are getting right up in the faces of Moist in their defense and picking this ball away in the midfield. Yet another chance for Williams Resolve. And it just feels like they're just throwing everything they can at the Moist net. And Moist really can't get a grip to throw anything back at them right now. Now we're less than a minute left. Moist trying to break into the corner. And the opportunities that Moist are getting are few and far between and they're not really taking full advantage. Well, I have to agree. It's just been almost complete domination so far for Williams Resolve. And I think... Most people would be thinking that this game one is at least going to go in the favour somewhat of Moist on paper. Such a strong roster in terms of individual calibres, but Williams Resolve doing such a good job as that oh! ball in field is sublime towards Noah Saki and the first goal put away in this series, the side of Williams Resolve. You could feel it bubbling and building ever since the first minute came and gone for Williams Resolve and then just that one pass. Between the two protagonists there on Williams Resolve, Breezy and Noah Saki to send it home and put Williams Resolve in a late lead, 1-0. And now Moist looking to respond and the first pass that they really try and pull off is intercepted and 
a little bit readable there from the Moist offense. Noah might go for goal again, looking for a second. He'll get it to flame, and Williams are going to take the first game in the series. With 11 shots on the board, there's been no shortage of opportunities, and what a piece of control that was from Noah Saki to just flick that ball across to flame. Just a gorgeous team play there to close this out. And again, that, that has been Williams Resolve MO throughout this first five minutes of the series. And they have done everything and deserved this win here in game number one. They take the first one. And Moist have a lot to think about in this next 60 seconds. Because that looked, I'm not going to lie, that just looked a little bit flat, a little bit mm. subpar even. Like, that is not the Moist we have came to know. Yeah, it's not the one that we remember from maybe the good old days from the Spring Major, for example. But this is only the first game in the series. I'm sure there's still many levels to this moist roster of which we're not seeing just yet. As once again, this team is trying to get used to that new roster switch. And as you mentioned rightly, Craftman, this Williams Resolve roster has been one which has stacked together for quite some duration now. They're very much comfortable mm. in their own skin and moist maybe coming to terms with that still. But... I think one of the biggest issues for me in that game one was Moist just struggled to break out of defense altogether, it seemed. Individual efforts just did not prove enough there. I mean, the stats that you just saw on screen there, 11 shots to two in favor of William Resolve and 69% field domination as well, meaning that the ball spent 69% of the game in the Moist half of the field. It did feel that way and Flame just looking to continue what they started won't drop here although a nice touch there from Joyle oh. will put it down and he, a big solo play from Joyle will put the first one on the board for Moist. And a massive dunk has spawned him that success as Breezy is so close to making a convincing touch away from his own back net in a very difficult situation there but Moist 1-0 up. That's exactly what Moist needed. After being held back and just giving absolutely, given absolutely nothing in game number one to get a goal on the board early is a little bit of malfunction at the junction in front of net. Not quite sure what everyone was thinking there. Flame does eventually get it over to Noah and he'll have another crack at it as he gets it round to Breezy. Another shot. Noah rotates in and great save there from Cash. Awesome save and it was actually two players that managed to see that ball wide as Cash Tries to duck underneath Noasaki and ends up going high to fake him out at the end there. And at the moment, Moist looking a bit more comfortable, albeit still with individual efforts. Juicy Central takes this one over to the backboard. Another touch heavy towards the middle. It's going to give a potential chance for a counter here. Yeah, a quick counter, but not put onto net. Is this? Ooh, the angle I was looking at there, I was looking at Joyo's camera and net. That looked like it was maybe sneaking inside. But this is better for Moist. They've shown they can defend well. They had a lot of saves in that last game there, Psycho. But they just didn't have the offense to back it up. And this time, Joyle gets a second. Lovely pass in the middle from Cash. And all of a sudden, it's the Resolve who looks like their Resolve is a bit broken. <laughs> Definitely so. And unfortunately... For Williams' resolve, I think they just blinked and missed that play altogether. There was only Flame isolated on his own backboard, left in defence to deal with a very, very menacing infield pass. As Flame once again trying to do some damage. Breezy with a nice first touch here, and there's Noah to follow directly behind. Maybe a touch infield, but Cash to block this one away as the attack keeps coming. A bit of mis miscommunication there as well from, uh, I believe, Flame and Breezy. Breezy was having it round the wall and Flame just came came in thinking he was just going to tap it once. Breezy went for it again and it just threw everything off rhythm a little bit. Now Williams resolve with a mountain to climb here in game number two and a 2-0 deficit.